Yes, wonderful. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, first of all, thanks for the organization here um, to have us here back in person. It's great and it's a pleasure to be attendee on such a nice conference. Uh, so a real big thank to all of you guys for making this happen. We want to talk about monitoring point of sales infrastructure. So this is more a non-technical um, talk. It's not hardcore technical like we had it uh, this morning, um, but it's about what we can achieve with Prometheus and in a way which is not really cloud native. So um, a short who am I? Um, my name is Felix. I'm engineering lead at the operations core tooling team at Proninger. Um My team is uh, responsible for running core infrastructure and Linux based services. So we, we do many things with Prometheus and cloud native stuff, but also help other teams which we will talk today. So yeah, point of sales. Um, this is everything which is located in a physical store. So cash desk, stuff like that. Everything we need to yeah, make money. Um, oh, where's my starting point? Uh, so yeah, that's our starting point for, for this talk. Um, Proninger is a luxury fashion store retailer, um, mostly here in South Germany. We are running multiple stores, outlets, uh, yeah, where we have luxury fashion stuff like that. And of course, we have cash desks. And in 2020, we had a challenge that there will be a new point of sales um, system, which was introduced or announced by yeah, uh, some architects. And the old one was pretty long in service uh, and it had just uh, ping checks with an old monitoring tool called PRTG. Maybe you, you know it. And yeah, my team was called to support the, the technicians of these point of sales infrastructure to support them um, in running this system. So uh, yeah, we already had Prometheus and we loved it so it was our natural choice to use it. And yeah, there are some um, issues we had to solve um, to make this happen. So um, on the first run here, uh, the overview, how is such a point of sales system uh, orchestrated? Uh, on the left, of course, we have Prometheus um, as our monitoring solution. And on the top, we have the core Linux-based services. Uh, they are responsible for yeah, handling all the, the registrations, all the, um, the, the processes. So it's, uh, it's a cloud database, it's a cloud instance, or multiple cloud instance, and one of the major public clouds. So, it wasn't big to issue. We, we know how to monitor this stuff because yeah, the exporters, their services carry, everything is nice. Um, the more challenging part is about how can we monitor the uh, devices in our stores. And the stores are built in a layered system. So we have per store, per branch, um, a so-called local point of sale server, which is, acts as a master server, which also is running a database. And it's a Windows server, uh, so all of these uh, point of sale stuff is mostly Windows based. And yeah, just a Windows server, that's even nice. Uh, it has a static IP, easy to monitor, easy to uh, discover. Where it gets really interesting is the low part, um, the point of sales devices, so cash desks. Cash desks are also Windows based devices. They are built on Windows uh, 10 Enterprise and they're running a Java software. Um, yeah. How is such a device built? Um, you can see it on the right. Um, these are mostly desktop systems in a form factor which is capable of yeah, making money, uh, ca making cash stuff. Um, so you have a touch screen, you have just a computer, a uh, Windows computer with a keyboard uh, and so on. Um, there's a printer, there's a uh, payment pad, stuff like that. So not too complicated to monitor these things because yeah, Windows, monitoring Windows with Prometheus, this is a soft problem. We have the Windows exporter, we have the matrix, we have everything we need. Um, the Java software, it's not that easy because uh, natively it doesn't have JMX matrix. The native choice would be JMX. At the moment, we don't have it, but um, we have a little exporter written in, um, in PowerShell. So tomorrow at the Lightning Talks, I will have a short session how to write exporters with PowerShell if you're interested. Yeah, but at the moment, uh, we are monitoring this uh, application, this core application with PowerShell and get generating some metrics. Um, then we have some peripherals like yeah, the payment um, provides or the payment terminals, um, the, the printers, some HTTP endpoints, some certificates, all the stuff you need today to connect uh, 
yeah, distributed services. So also no big problem, no big issue. Uh, we have black box exporter. We can just monitor our certificate endpoints and so on. That's easy. Um, so yeah, where's, where's the problem? Services Calvary. Um, there's no API. So this is the real world. So there is no inventory about what is deployed, what is uh, the current state of the system. Um, we don't have cloud-native features. So if AWS is running a server for you, um, there is an API because it's easy for AWS. If it has an API, it's billable, so you have to pay for it. Um, and in this real world, yeah, there is no API describing what's, uh, what's deployed. So this is the case for in-store point-of-sales devices, but it's also the case for, let's say, network devices in a, in a data center and so on. Uh, you need to know what's there. Um, and the next issue is these deployments are no static deployments. So there can be cases when a point-of-sale device will just break and it has to be removed and a technician uh, has to go there, remove it, um, put another one from the inventory up there uh, so yeah, the process can go on. Um, but it's some kind of a dynamic system. So it's not too static. So we can't just have an Excel sheet or stuff like that which describes what's up there. And there's no central instance knowing all the deployment status around all these branches. So, yeah, we need people in the, in the branches who can manage these devices and tell us is it active, is it not active, just to reduce the false positive alerts if one of these things is broken. So, yeah. Why and where should promoters know that there are devices we want to monitor? And conclusion of this is we need an inventory, uh, something which has uh, our cloud-native um, feeling. Um, and yeah, let's introduce Netbox. Um, simple question, who of you, know, you, know, you guys know Netbox? Okay, quite a few, So, but I will go a bit into detail. Um, we'll show you a demo in a minute, and we have a full demo of all of this later. Um, in the end, Netbox is a Python-based web application um, which was originally developed at DigitalOcean to monitor, to, to yeah, manage all of your data center inventory and your IP address management. So no more Excel sheets where anybody can change or pick an IP address. So we have a nice application with lifecycle management, with prefix management, branches, sites, and so on. We'll see this later. And we can manage all our devices, everything which has an IP in Netbox. This is cool. Um, and the best part of it, something an Excel sheet doesn't have, it has an API. So we can reuse this information with structured information, which we can just pick up. So yeah, um, best uh, thing about Netbox is it has, has extensions, so we can plug in there. Netbox is the source of automation. It's the source of truth for all our automation. Um, we also use it to deploy network infrastructure and so on. Uh, so you, you do, can't only use it as services carry. You can also use it as an Ansible inventory or Ansible source of truth. Uh, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, let's have a quick look how Netbox looks. I have a demo here, uh, and you can see yeah, it's a an, it's an web application, and we uh, have devices here, we have power connections, we have uh, cable connections. Just a quick peek how this can work. And here you can see, you see uh, this is our IP address management. So yeah, everybody can see which IPs are assigned, uh, what's their life cycle and so on. That's nice. Um, but we also have devices. Um, so you can see, yeah, devices with names, uh, their status, their site and so on. And all of this is discoverable via an API. So let's have a fast look. Um, we have it over here. This is the representation in the API of a device. So yeah, cool. Uh, we can discover all of our devices. Anything else we need? So yeah, we want to have this cloud-native integration with uh, Netbox and Prometheus. Um, and bonus, we want to have information we have in Netbox as labels available in Prometheus. So we can route based on the site or route based on the owner tenant. So let's say in a store in Munich here, we have a new store in Munich since last year. Um, uh, a cache desk is broken. A uh, technician in Munich will be, will be paged, not one in Stuttgart. So yeah, we can route these alerts based of, uh, on metadata we have in Netbox. 
problem. Like Julian uh, told us uh, this, this morning, um, we have no Go implementation of NetBox as Python. And yeah, there's this API, and we're also doing a Terraform provider for NetBox, and we are building the Go NetBox library for ourselves, and sometimes it's a mess. Um, so we have the situation that there's no real native integration of the Go world uh, and the Python world. So we have to, uh, yeah, we have to find a solution, and we have some options. The classic approach um, carried us for a while. Um, files SD, we can just render um, a file. So this is an example how this worked. Um, we had some configuration, and you can see there's a wild fil a filter issue and so on. We have to filter things in a netbox. Uh, we have threading because it's a bit slow, we'll see later, and we have uh, a delay. So we have just a, a kind of cron job which will scrape the Netbox API and dump it to a file. Um, in the end, we get this configuration for Prometheus, and uh, yes, yeah, it's just services carry based on files. This wor is, is working, it's okay, um, but it has some downsides. Um, it's easy to implement, it's just Python code. Uh, it's open source, and you have to no, make no adjustments to NetBox, but um, there's a new component on each Prometheus. You, ha you have to run this uh, sidecar in every Prometheus instance. Uh, you have new components. Um, you have to monitor all of these components. And the worst thing is we have so, so many API calls because uh, NetBox list views are not enough. We need some more details from the devices, so we have to query five or four uh, uh, requests to NetBox for each device, which will grow a bit too much when you have really many devices in your NetBox, so that's why we have threading in there. So, yeah, it was okay, but it had problems. Um, it's still open source. It's still there. You can use it. Um, but I personally don't maintain it anymore. It's just in a bug fix mode. Um, there will be no, no, no nice features at, uh, in the future. But there was this day. And there was a Twitter thread uh, with Julian. And yeah, we have chatted about this a bit earlier that there will be a generic HTTP SD in, uh, in Prometheus, which sounds great because we can fix all of these issues with our old uh, files SD. Uh, integration. And yeah, that's, that's the solution we, we have and we have today, and it's HTTPSD. It's just fetch the targets via HTTP. Uh, HTTP. So it was introduced in 2.28, uh, and that's all you need. No more sidecar, no more, no more uh, metrics about a sidecar you have to maintain, no rollouts. Uh, it's just a configuration where we tell um, Prometheus which uh, URL we want to have. Um, maybe in token and the, the interval which uh, should be used to scrape these targets. Uh, bonus, if Prometheus is not able to fetch uh, these targets, it just uh, remembers the old ones. So you don't lose all your targets just if NetBox is not available. We have some buffer here. That's nice. Yeah, um, no sidecar prometers. Yay. Um, full power of the NetBox API. You've seen this, uh, this weird filter query in my, in my first approach. Um, we had to replicate all of these NetBox filters to our sidecar. This is a problem because we always have to keep up with NetBox and have all these features. The uh, implementation now is a NetBox um, plugin. It's just a new view on the, uh, on the NetBox API. So we can reuse all the power of the NetBox API with just a new view, a new, just a new format with with the in a moment. Much less API calls. Um, yeah, downside is we need a plugin uh, in NetBox. But that's fine. The plugins in NetBox are stable. You can use them. And yeah, it's also open source. Um, feel free to have a look at it, ma make merge requests, um, talk to me. Um, yeah. Yes, little demo. Um, where are we in time? That's fine. Uh, we have a little demo here, and I have to switch over. So. This is our demo, this is our Prometheus instance, and you can see here we have a configuration, uh, pretty simple, um, local Prometheus instance, and it has some uh, netbox running in the local stack, and we are querying for every device which is active. So that's easy. And let's have a look at the netbox itself. That's the upstream netbox. This is our uh, test netbox. You can see we have three point of sales devices, uh, one in Stuttgart, one in Munich, and they have IPs and so on. They have manufacturers, all the stuff. 
And you can see two are active and one is in the inventory. So our um, expectation is to have these two uh, devices in monitoring. And yeah, let's have a look. Um, here we go. Two devices. Um, no static configuration, no Excel files, just fetch them from um, Netbox. And to demonstrate how this works, and you uh, believe me that this will work, uh, we just put this device from inventory into the active state. It's active. And in some seconds, let's see, we expect our target peer. So, easy. Someone who's responsible for managing these devices just can activate them or manage them, manage them in um, Netbox, and it's up, it's monitored, and you don't have to go to uh, a ticket process, something like that, it's just there. So, uh, yeah, it's up there, it's monitored, we can do the same in the other direction, just put it back to inventory when there was maybe an, an action, stuff like that. Let's use another one. Uh, This one, let's put these two back in inventory or make them offline. So you remember we had this filter for just active devices. Now these devices are not active anymore. And you can see device one and two, they're gone. No more alerts. That was easy. Yes, um, we had this other issue. We want to make some alert routing based on, say, let's say, the site. Um, and you can see here, we have these labels, uh, Storm Munich. Uh, you can see in the relabeling, uh, let's have a look at the service discovery itself. Uh, in the relabeling, we have all of these metadata available from Netbox. And in my configuration, I just have a relabel config which will um, keep the site slug and put it to a new uh, label in Prometheus. So in our alert matcher, we can make a routing rule um, to alert or to page the technicians in Munich uh, and not in, in Stuttgart. In, in best case, someone just uh, decommissioned the cache desk and uh, made it offline before, so nobody's paged. Yes. Um, a bit of conclusion. Um, Prometheus and Netbox are a perfect match. So Netbox can help us to describe, to in, have an inventory about this native world, about this real world. Um, we can query all targets via API. We can query with all the power of Netbox. Um, and we have some kind of cloud native feeling um, for our inventory. Um, the cool part is it's not only usable for point of sales infrastructure, this was just our uh, yeah, example uh, and our demo case. You can use it for data center management, uh, inventory of all your routers, inventory of all your switches, all this stuff with all this metadata, uh, no more config files, no more sidecars, just query for Netbox. Um, yeah, you all can, also can use bare metal infrastructure. And for me, that's maybe the most relevant information you maybe can get away with, uh, from this talk, give your engineers a reason why they should document their infrastructure. Uh, you all know these, these Excel sheets, they are weird, they are outdated. Uh, even Netbox can get messy if nobody keeps up with the reality. And when we combine and have a coupling between Netbox and the real world and the monitoring, we have a benefit for our engineers to keep up with documentation because when my device is documented and its state is documented, I won't get a false alert. So nobody will be paged in the night just because uh, someone forgot to document their device. And that's a real, real nice uh, feature. We, we love this because our documentation is always up to date and it works really nice. Yeah, that's all. I'm open for any questions. I hope you enjoyed the talk, uh, and maybe now you can use Netbox. All righty, there is a question. Hello, thanks for the presentation. My question is, uh, you said that uh, your post terminals uh, are connected to the central server in each uh, location, 
and this central server uh, is connected to, to the cloud, yeah. uh, centralized cloud. Yeah. And as I understood, you push metrics from every location to the centralized cloud. And my question is, uh, which solution do you use for storing metrics in the centralized cloud? Yeah. Um, at the moment, we only have one central Prometheus pair for monitoring these devices from our central data center, but we plan to have a pair of Prometheus instances in each store and then um, use uh, some kind of upstream or uh, yeah, write, uh, write remote uh, metrics uh, to have them in a central storage. So you can combine this because uh, you can just deploy a, a Prometheus instance in every store, just configure the HTTP SD. So we have a central networks in, um, instance, which have to be is, uh, central because it's the source of truth. But we can scale out as many Prometheus we want to have. We don't need the sidecars. We just have this query with, with config. It's really easy. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so thank you for being here. I always love hearing about other ways to use Prometheus. Um, we definitely develop Prometheus with like 24 seven operations in mind, right? SoundCloud is never off. Um, did you have any or like what kind of challenges did you have with stores closing overnight and just nothing happening? Uh, that's a pretty interesting question because we are working on that at the moment. Um, our stores are opened from 10 o'clock to uh, normally, I think, 8 o'clock in the evening. But there are so-called uh, Sundays, I uh, don't know the English word, Verkaufsoffene Sonntage, which is a special thing in Germany that you can open your store in, uh, on, on so Sundays. So we have special opening times which are out of the normal schedule. Um, at the moment, we use the feature of Alert Manager to mute alerts in the night. So just, we, we generate these alerts in the night, but we don't route them. Um, that's OK. We are searching for possibilities to just uh, yeah, disable uh, alerts on the Prometheus sites totally. Um, there are some ideas to have some kind of mask with a 1 and a, and a 0 and just uh, make an XOR of the, of the alert with this uh, metric. But yeah, we're working on that. That's a not, not a finally solved question. Uh, thanks for the talk. We use a similar setup, or actually implementing a similar setup with Prometheus scraping our like service discovery through the HTTP. We are currently using a sidecar, which is problematic. Um, how do you deal with tag explosion on devices and label explosion into like Prometheus? So like if someone adds some arbitrary tags to devices and then they get pushed through to Prometheus and then you have maybe some like big data issues. When, uh, well, it's hard to understand from here, but um, like I understand it, if we have problems with rogue labels, um, which destroy our TCP, okay. Um, yeah, that's an issue. Um, you have to keep an eye on netbox, so you have to keep an eye on who's uh, able to push labels and yeah, stuff which can get labels to um, Netbox. Uh, Netbox has a pretty decent uh, permission model, so we use this for yeah, just limiting the, the scope or the, the permissions of an engineer, but yeah, you have to, have to have an eye on that because it's just dynamic labels, so everybody can push stuff there, that's right. Okay, looks like that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks awesome. a lot. <laughs> um.